Hey guys, Owen here from Research is Broken. So tonight, get your wording rituals ready because we are going to delve deep into the Soul Blight Grief Lords. <laughs> So when you play the Soul Blight Gravy Lords, it feels like you're playing the Necromancer in an ARPG. What that means is that your heroes feel like they're the ones that carry the whole team. Then you've got your minions who will swarm the enemy's warband and even if they kill the minions, your hero has the ability to wrestle them. But you shouldn't rely on the minions because their stats really suck. They're slow, they have little attacks and everything. But fortunately, you do have all these specialist fighters who will help with your heroes, but you can't wrestle them. So, the downside is GW has noticed how powerful Rezo is. So, it has recently hit with a nerf bat. But even if the recent nerf has happened, the Soulbreak Grave Lords still feel very menacing when you play Warcry. So, if you want to have fun summoning skeletons, you should try out this Warband. So, the Soulbreak has the Unfeeling Flesh. I really like this reaction because this complements with the faction's Swarm Tactic. By that, I mean when I put my minions in front of their fighters, they minions can last longer by using the reaction and then the specialists, the heroes can do whatever they want while the enemy's fighters are stuck, really. And as for the heroes and the specialist units, well, I don't really like to use this ability because I want them to do other actions except maybe for the Black Knights because the Black Knights have average toughness and then they've got big wounds not really good in fighting so what, whenever I try to stick someone in a location I just charge my Black Knight there <laughs> and then use my, un my un unfeeling flesh to make the Black Knight stay longer than it should. Summon Undead Minions This ability can be accessed by all Gravelord heroes. Quite frankly, this ability was overpowered and I still think this ability is powerful. What I really like to do with this ability is bait the other players to strike at my minions. That way, most of their attacks are away from other fighters that can't be raised. And I have additional bodies I can deploy when contesting objectives whenever I use this ability. I categorize the heroes of the Grave Lords into combat monsters or sustained heroes. The White King, his Onstead version and the Vargoyle are what I consider to be the combat monsters. They go in and smash and among the three, I consider the White King on Skele Skeletal Steed to be the best. That's because when you combine his 2-inch melee range and 8-inch movement, this gives him a dangerous 10-inch threat range when you activate him. When you combine the White King's big critical damage, good toughness, and its double to increase his critical damage to really ridiculous levels, these heroes are perfect for going up against the enemy's elites. I still won't let my White King be surrounded though, because it doesn't have any built-in healing abilities compared to other Gravelord heroes, and its life wounds, while respectable, can be easily whittled down. Then we have the Vargoyle. When you factor in that this has flying and movement of 8, this hero is the most mobile combat hero in your option. Then you add in the number of attacks and damage and this thing can be scary. Its double can also make him a good choice to kill steel since if it succeeds in taking this shot, 
Each chip ability can further harass the enemy warband. Finally, with a whooping wound of 32, this fighter can survive a good number of lucky crits. To offset this fighter's advantage, this fighter's strength and toughness is average, turning this into an average hero. I consider the Necromancer as a sustained hero. Its double allows you to damage a nearby minion to heal your Necromancer. This fighter allows you to have dead minions ready to be deployed near your heroes when you raise them. This hero squad used to be fun when Grave Lords were a good option to be your minions, but now with the nerf, making your ne nearby zombies and skeletons gets getting an extra attack really isn't that scary. So the Necromancer's double should not be seen as a way for him to survive prolonged combat because he only has a toughness of 3 and the moment fighters get near him, he will be easily slain and then his squad, those should not be relied in because I've played so many games where I never get a quad so don't put that as a tactic in your game, think of it as a bonus in the end, would I put Necromancer in my warband? I'll, I'll pick him if he's, if I have other other heroes, so he'll be just a support. But if I only have one hero in my warband, I won't pick this guy really. Let's now move to the Vampire Lord and Castellans. These are what I would consider to be hybrid heroes since their attack profile and toughness are quite good. These fighters also have the ability to remove a large number of wounds. The drawback though is that their ability to heal is very expensive. In my opinion, the Vampire Lord is a better pick than a Castellan just because its flying ability makes it a very mobile fighter. I mean, sure, this fighter only has an average strength, but if this guy quits, oh baby, it will sting. Right here we have the Vargais, Blood Knights with Templar Blade or Templar Lance, and the Black Knights. These guys have better stats than your minions, but can't be revived once they fall down. Your opponents will most likely try to bring down these fighters before your specialist gets to do the task you have for them. This is where swarming them with your minions or positioning your specialist so they can complete a task becomes very crucial when you play the Grave Lords. Among your specialist fighters, the Black Knights, which also includes their elite version, the Hell Knights, these are the cheapest you can feel. These fighters have a good amount of wounds with a toughness of 4, which means these guys can take a beating, but don't expect it to be a good fighter. Their STR of 3 and OK damage means they will take their time to take out a fighter. Their best use is to go grab treasures and hold it while his friends come to support him or to delay a fighter by suddenly coming up to them and force them to either attack or waste an action to disengage. I prefer the Black Knight because of its longer reach which means a larger threat range not to mention the fact that the Hell Knight is 160 points while the Black Knight is only 125 which means I am willing to look past its weakness. For abilities, I barely use the Deathly Charge on the Black Knight because I want to capitalize their long weapon range. I do find the Unfeeling Flesh reaction to be a good combo once opponents try to take down this fighter. The Hell Knight also has access to the ability Chosen Champion. I've got to say that with its low strength, 
unless you're desperate, don't give the Hell Knight this ability. You're better off using Rampage on another fighter. The Vargas is just the non-hero version of the Vargoil. You're paying for its high movement, wounds, and flying ability. It has an average toughness and SDR stat with no healing ability. This guy is best for sniping down weak fighters. I would consider fighting the enemy's elite with this fighter. Because of its damage, I would really would rather bring a Vargoil and bring in more minions than get this fighter. Simply because the damage of this fighter is lacking for me. For the Blood Knights, you can choose to give them Templar Blade or Lance. They are also the non-hero version for the Castellan. Between the two, I pick the Lance. It has better strength and larger melee reach. I also love that it only costs 200 while the Sword version is 205. I really find the Deathly Charge to be a costly ability and barely ever use it. But if there is any fighter I would use it for, I would activate it on the Blood Knight with a Templar Blade since his 1 inch melee stat means you are not giving up an advantage when you use this ability. Incredibly, the Blood Knights have access to Thirst for Blood and I do find healing my non-hero vamps useful since these guys have a very good combat set no matter what weapon you, you you end up choosing for them. And then we have the models from the cursed city. So in the interest of transparency, no I do not own any of these models. I'd love to hunt a cursed CD box but I have yet to get one. My observations for each of these models then are not based on actual gameplay but merely on hypothesis. So I'll start with what I think is the worst, the Kosoragi Night Guard. This fighter has no combo whatsoever. It has a regular movement, speed and while it has a good SDR, it has a very low attack rating and its damage output doesn't even stand out. For something that has a interesting model, I mean it's an Uger zombie, there's no minion stat whatsoever so the only thing it can do based on its runes is the unfilling flesh, no combo whatsoever so total pass. Next. Virkos Bloodborne is the cheapest fighter in the box and it has a good weapon stat. Sadly, it's a very fragile fighter. It strangely, strangely has no access to Thirst for Blood, even though in the lore these are supposed to be vampires, making them even more fragile. I would pick the spiders though if I wanted to build an all vampire themed warband. Next, the one I do like is the Varskir. It really is an interesting model though because in all the Soul Blade options, this fighter deals the biggest damage. It only has an average toughness but at least it has a large wound characteristic so in case it gets punched, it won't go down easily. I'd really be interested to get one of these models to play one day. What I find frustrating about the Virkos Bloodborne and the Vars Clear is their pseudo mobility. For a double, these fighters can gain flying, but this is a very painful cause because paying this ability prevents you from speeding up your minions to a better position. Now let's take a look at the skeletons, zombies, and grave guards. All minions have the Shambling Horde ability. In the first round of the game, Setting up your minions is crucial since their movement is very slow. Usually, I use three heroes in my warband so that I can put one in each role for deployment. That way, 
In turn 1, I can at least get doubles and have 2 minions be placed in important zones. As you can imagine, if you can anticipate or manipulate where the heart of the battle will be and put most of your minions there, you will have a huge ad advantage in the game. Zombies are the toughest of the bunch. With only 2 attacks and 3 strength, its combat is not that dangerous. But if this model can swing a quick, it does deal a powerful 4 damage. For 40 points and having 10 wounds, this fighter isn't bad. Just like the movies, the dead walkers work best when they outnumber a fighter. Use the unfeeling flesh to make it difficult to bring a fighter down. You can also use the dead walkers to run forward to an enemy and make your long reach fighters, like for instance your black knights or white king on a steed, hit the enemies from the back. Then we have the skeleton warriors. So you have a choice between short weapons or long range weapons. Since all types of skeletons have fourth toughness, I am using the long range weapons to increase their threat range. Skeleton champions aren't really that great cause it only has one additional attack with 4 more wounds. Given the choice, I'd rather have 2 skeleton warriors rather than, rather than 1 skeleton champion. Finally, we have the Grave Guards, the elites, well among the minions that is. These have better wounds than your zombies and skeleton warriors, and depending on your loadout, can be filled up for a roll. Give them white blade and shield and now your Grave Guards have average toughness. Give them great white blade and now their damage is very respectable for their price point. I think the Seneschal is the only fighter worthy of receiving the chosen champion ability. Since this model has a high strength, making it attack the enemy is no longer a wild swing, plus it has a good damage rating. Of all the nerf, the grave guards have been hit the most because when you raise them, they only regain wounds equal to the value of the ability dice. So now you're thinking of starting a Soul Blight Grave Lords Warband. So the first thing that comes to mind when you want to get this warband is the Vanguard box. Now here you've got plenty of models that you can make, in fact more than 1000 points, but the models you can make are the Vampire Lord, the Castellan, the Vargoyle. You can make 4 Blood Knights, so it's up to you, since each of the Blood Knights and even the Castellan can be turned into a Blood Knights, but make it into a Castellan. For the 4 Blood Knights, you can decide what weapon they can have. The kit gives you options, so I would suggest 2 Blood Knights with Templar Blade and 2 Blood Knights with Lance, that way you can change your blood knights if you want to try different types of build and since this, let's be honest blood knights and the castellan are very expensive it's very unlikely that you will fill your whole warband war with blood knights then you've got two var guys and then for the skeleton kits you can have two skeleton champions I would suggest one holding a mace and one holding a halberd, that way you can change it up. And then you've got 18 skeleton warriors. Of the skeleton warriors, you can have 9 of them holding a short weapon and then 9 holding a spear. So that's it, that's what you can build. Now, if you're thinking of making an on, on a budget, uh, the first thing that comes to mind would be the skeleton warriors kit and then it's up to you what path you want to pick you could get the vampire lord the white king on a steed or white king on, a, on foot now if you can see on my presentation here 
I've I've put the necromancer in each of these paths. This is an optional path you can have. I highly suggest not to pick a necromancer only as a hero. Yes, it's cheaper, but the necromancer is very fragile and the skeleton warriors themselves, even the skeleton champions, very fragile when faced with elite. So you don't want a very fragile warband with you, you want something that can stand up a few crits. So there, that's how you can start your warband. So now let's talk about lists that you can make for your warband. So I've prepared three lists. So the first list I'm showing you has three heroes. You've got the White King of Steed, Necromancer, and Vampire Lord. So I've put the Necromancer here to be the support for both your combat heroes. I've put the Black Knight and White King on the same roles because my idea here is that these two fighters are going to be the grabbers. So if, there's, if the mission is to grab a treasure, the White King uh, on stage and the Black Knight will be responsible for going to places as fast as they can. And then the other roles, the one that's being taken by the Necromancer and the Vampire Lord have different number of skeleton warriors. The idea here is that if you have a lucky quad on the first round and the necromancer's uh, group is there then you can easily move them as fast as you can of course this is very don't make this a tactic just think of it as a bonus because quad is very hard but the idea here is that for the skeleton warriors on the first few rounds use the shambling horde as much as you can to position them into important places so that you can fight them on on future rounds all right so the next list well is a bit different i remove the necromancer and put in a second vampire lord so no more support just all total combat heroes their job is to bring down the elites while the skeleton warriors are responsible for controlling the other fighters of the enemy so that your warriors will not be overrun. Especially the, the White King, he might have a very big armor, but if he's overrun with fighters that have the same strength as his toughness or more, your White King might be in trouble. By the way, I forgot to put it here, but skeleton warriors that I am I am currently using are the ones with long range weapon. That way, I have a bigger threat range. Next, for the last one, this warband list is specifically designed for those people who bought the Vanguard box. So here. We use all the heroes found in the box, so the Castellan, the Vargoil, and the Vampire Lord. I'm still using Skeleton Warriors instead of the Vargais or the Blood Knight because those warriors are very expensive. So here I've put in two warriors, two Skeleton on each rolls. But when you're very used to this list, you're very welcome to change this list up. That's it. Um, okay, wow, I did not expect we would reach beyond 20 minutes, but then again, we had a lot of fighters to cover in Soul Blight. So, what do you think of the video? Tell me below in the comment section. And if you like it, please don't forget to click like, subscribe, and then until next time, this is Owen. See ya.